Talk about the NICS system because, uh, you know, I will, I'm going to follow up with, oh, Mr. Schiff is he's still there. Okay, follow up with a little bit of what he brought up. Because, you know, before we expand the system, and I know the president used very strong language yesterday. I mean, he used the word lie, which I, you know, you can, you can disagree with someone's, you know, positions and efficacy, but using the word lie, I'm a little worried about because some of the things that were said about the NICS system, I have said. So I'm going to just delve a little bit into it. Because before we expand the system, uh, in general, I would li always like to ask the question, is the current program effective and is it enforced? And I'm going to de very briefly deal with these two. In terms of effectiveness, you are aware in the state of Maryland, the last figures I have is from 2011. I will ask, I will ask you actually to get the, the most updated figures in the state of Maryland. There are only 61 records in the NICS system, five felons and, uh, five, five felons and 56 people with mental health. So there are only 61 people in the whole state of Maryland who can be rejected under a NICS inquiry in 2011. So that means a person... And I believe me, I've, I've been in the prisons in Maryland. We have more than five felons. That means only 61 people will be denied going into a store today, picking up a military rifle off the rack, standard issue World War II military rifle off the rack, call the next background check and be denied. Because there are only 61 records in the whole system. Is that, your, is that an effective system? Do you really think the people of Maryland you know, that we can, we should be just expanding a system, which is so, and as Mr. Schiff wrote up, and you probably realize, 33 states have no entries for drug abuse disqualification, zero entries for drug abuse. Many states, zero entries for mental health disqualifications, which really was the only thing that would have prevented some of these tragedies, and they're tragedies. But what I'm getting at has to do with appropriations. We have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the NARIP and NCHIP programs, hundreds of millions of dollars in grants going to states to get this data into the system. And actually, I think by your testimony that I couldn't draw it out in the written testimony, it appears you may have actually asked for more money than that. We've spent hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't have a system where states are reporting things. We're going to present to the American people this, this, this hope that, oh, my gosh, if we just expand it and make it universal, you know, the world will be great. But, in fact, the system is full of holes. It, it, this has a lot of flaws. So can you address that? When you come in those programs, all I'm going to ask you is please address those glaring problems and make the states follow up. Maryland's taken $10 million of that money. We report 61 cases, $10 million over the past 17 years to report 61 cases. I could go more, get more cases reported walking through Jessup, uh, high secure, uh, the, the Jessup prison and just taking the names of the felons who are in there. I could get more in one day.